Last time on Sailing Zatara. After making the Great Atlantic Crossing, we arrived in the Caribbean and spent as much time in the water as we could. And we continued sailing northwest to make it to Puerto Rico by Christmas. I tell you a story about me and you Out on the water, surrounded by the blue They scream that only I'll be saved They told us off the line that I just let it float away yeah, I'll let it float away I'll let it float away I'll let it float away Float away, float away We absolutely love Puerto Rico. It was so great to be back in U.S. territory. And just as we did two years ago, we spent the Christmas holidays on this gorgeous tropical island. We spent most of our time in the city, shopping at some of our favorite stores for parts and supplies, Christmas gifts, and of course made a Costco run for provisions. We enjoyed a nice quiet holiday with just our family and our friends from Wiz. Christmas dinner! Merry Christmas! Saute that thing and Marine Sharps and a little bit of something else. Can I have a knife, guys? Oh, no. Uh, you can use my looks. They're pretty sharp. Oh! <laughs> So tomorrow, we're going to try to go to the Yekas, which is 10 miles to the east of where we're at in Palmas del Mar, Humacao, Puerto Rico. And we're going to work our way around the south uh, south coast of Vieques, which is known for a little bit of piracy on dinghy dinghies, and so we're going to have to keep our dinghies secure all the time. Hopefully, by the end of this week, we're going to hear some news on whether we're going to haul out in Tortola to get a bottom job and get some electronics upgrades on the boat. We need to know that. It's kind of putting us in a jam of getting to Florida. We got to be in Florida before March, the first of March, so that we can get up to my daughter Tate's baby shower. And then we got to get to the canal by around March 15th, March 20th. We also get to pick up our new Go Fast dinghy in Florida. We are looking forward to that. What a great thing that's going to be. We're going to show you guys all about that when we get there. And we got cells we're working on getting made. And we've got to do the measurement for the cells. We're going to have a whole video on measuring cells and, and dealing with precision cells and uh, working out on how to get sails built when you're on a far off country where you don't have people to come to your boat, how to measure properly on a catamaran for sails or our type of catamaran and what the sailmaker needs and the kind of sails we chose for the kind of cruising we, we're doing out here. So we got a lot of things happening, a lot of logistics coming together. That's all we got. After spending a couple of days showing Anna's friend mainland Puerto Rico, we left Humacao and motored two hours east to the Puerto Rican island of Vieques.
doing it. So tell us what we're doing. So we're going lobstering this morning. So we're gonna go snorkeling and a little diving. We got our snare with us and we're gonna go get some lobsters off of Vieques, Puerto Rico. Is lobster ever? I don't know, but it's perfectly legal. I mean, did you make that word up? Lobstering. I like it. It's a good verb. Here while we was looking for lobsters, we found this channel clinging crab and I pulled him out from underneath the rock, but I didn't know if they're in season and I didn't really want to have to boil up a crab, so we let him go, but he was sure neat to look at and he was a big boy. After a few days in Vieques, we moved on to Calabria. Okay to go through the canal, isn't it? Don't got anything special? Okay. St. Thomas. We've got Gabrielle here, which is Anna's best friend for life. That's who she's been friends with ever since she's a little girl. She's uh, come out on the boat with us for a couple of weeks. And so we've been going around the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico, cruising around, showing Gabrielle the sights, doing some diving, lobstering. You kind of look like Trump here, baby. <laughs> I'm going all Trump right here. 
So we're just cruising around. We're waiting on some answers of whether we're going to haul the boat out in Tortola and get a bottom job and some electronics upgrades or we're going to take it to Florida. I need to get those answers this week. We're kind of getting crunched down to whether we need to go north or west, east to Tortola or north to Florida. So we're really trying to, we need to get these answers. So not much of a story here, motoring most of the time because we're going into the wind east back to like we're going to St. Martin, but we're not. It's been great being down here and, and uh, diving every day and enjoying the, the live ocean. It's so much alive. There's so much wildlife in this ocean. It's just unbelievable. And we, I really enjoy that. Un unlike the Mediterranean, which didn't have near the life, the coral life, the animal life. We just really enjoy the life here in the, in the ocean. If we end up walking somewhere, I can heal it, and I have flip flops. Okay, I don't know where the dinghy dock is. I don't know. Get our Gucci and Louis Vuitton. This looks like the place where you like go down into a secret cellar and get your weed. Yeah? Is that where you keep your weed? Yes. In it's in our secret cellar. cellar. So just just be careful when one No on problem. So I'm Renee, by the way. I'm Harry. Harry, nice to meet you. Gabrielle, uh, Finn, and Anna. Pleasure to meet everyone. Right. Th this is season five for the for Pi. Um, okay. This is for me season one for, for the new owner season. Okay, season got, it. One. got it. Yeah, so Taryn Sasha's were the were the um, mother and father of the, the concept of of, of Pi, yeah. and um, and built it into this iconic restaurant. Um, in awesome. the Caribbean. Yeah. It's, it's been awesome. on all kinds of TV shows and. Really? Like, yeah. That's yeah. neat. How are you doing today? Good. I'm Renee. Renee. I'm Elise. And this is Sammy. Hi, Hi. Sammy. Hi, Elise. Nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you. We walked down the stairs. We were warned about the. Yes, the ovens are very, very high. Yeah, yeah. Where are you both from? We're from Texas. Nice. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> well, where are you guys from? Yeah, I'm from Wisconsin. Uh, Sammy's from Maryland. Maryland. Cool. I've been down here since August of 2011, and Sammy is wow. relatively wow. fresh. Going on month three, right? Yeah, month three. Very cool. Yeah. This is way bigger. Than yeah, this is nice. So, how many 
pizzas do you make in an average day? Um, lately, we've been doing anywhere between uh, 50 and 60 pizzas, I would say, a day. Wow. Uh, the season maximum is 73 pizzas. Wow. So we can pump a lot out of this tiny little oven for sure. Yeah. I'm down hot. Anna was asking last night, where do you get your um, your, your materials, your supplies? There's a, on, on island, there's a place called Merchants. Uh, okay. Merchants Market. It, it sells to all the restaurants in, on the yeah. island, on, on island and, and off island. Okay. In this case. Yeah. So we uh, two days a week, and you just missed it. That that boat was full of supplies. All that, right, that's cool. Yeah, it is. It, it is fun getting them like the 50-pound bags of flour yeah. from one boat to another. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I haven't fallen in yet. <laughs> what an experience. Harry spent several minutes with us, sharing the day-to-day -day workings of this awesome food truck on the water. The sturdy aluminum boat survived the 250 mile an hour gusts of Hurricane Irma back in 2017, even when fiberglass boats all around it did not. Yes. Okay, and we've got our delivery window back here, our pickup window back here. There's a cleat so people can just come up on their dinghy. It makes it really easy. Yeah. yeah. The Sasha and Tara, they really thought of everything they in design. Sure this is, yeah, food truck. Yeah. Food truck on the water. That's exactly what it is. So does this boat move around or do you just stay right it here? Stays, it stays, stays right, right here. here. Uh, once a month we take it to the fuel dock. Yeah. yeah. It's basically yeah. the only time she moves. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess you have a generator going constantly. Yeah. yeah. What kind of fuel do you burn in this thing? Daily it's five gallons about a, for a day for, for wow. the generator. Yeah. Okay, thank you so yeah, much, Harry. We'll get out of your hair. All right, well, pleasure meeting everyone. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks so much. You have a wonderful day. Truly awesome. a pleasure. And best, so of luck, best of luck on your thank adventures. You. I'm it. very jealous. <laughs> with the words and you get points for it. Scrabble? Bingo. Yep. Dang. Wow. Okay. Um, this is usually September um, and it's the very uh, Labor Day. Oh, that, nope. remember, you remember, go to Legacy like and you First wear this. Cool. Yes. <laughs> come on, nice job. Oh, uh, 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 come on. What does this tar mean? Uh, driftwood. Yes.
diving today. We're going diving today. Who all's going? Jack, Anna, me and Mama. Anna's going to go. Yeah. Am I allowed to go? No. You can go sit on the beach and snorkel. This dive was about 100 yards from the back of our boat at the anchorage in Christmas Cove on Great St. James Island. And oh my gosh, it was one of the coolest dives ever. Huge boulders teeming with life. So many fish. We saw a nurse shark and even a few turtles. Oh, and these really neat tunnels and caves everywhere. Oh my lordy, a little creepy at first, but nothing stops Keith from seeing what's down there. Gotta go in there, gotta figure that out. We were at a max depth of about 30 feet, but most of the dive was up around 15 feet, so light was good, and it was a really good dive. You can see the haze throughout the water. The abundance of plankton makes for a well-stocked habitat. These fish were well-fed and very happy. Okay, so how was your adventure on the Zatara? It was better than I ever imagined. Really? Yes. Awesome. Cool. Got to go to places I never thought I'd ever go to. Cool. So what do you think and about? Aww. What do you think about the boat life? It's relaxing. Yeah. More than <laughs> Texas life. Exactly. It's go, go, go. <laughs> well, we didn't do any school while you were yeah. with us, so it was... And we weren't really sailing. We never got the sails out. So, cool. But even the motoring was so fun. It was peaceful and I, yeah. I just felt really at peace. Oh, good. Well, you're welcome anytime on our boat. Okay, say your goodbyes. Bye, sweetie. Love you. Be safe. We'll see you in February. We'll be home. Yeah. Okay. Hey guys, we are uh, sitting in St. Thomas right now. You guys have been watching our Atlantic Crossing and some of those other videos. We hope you guys have been enjoying those. We are going to address some of the comments that we got on our uh, first Atlantic Crossing, but we're not going to do that today because I don't like being too political and, and uh, it, you know, I don't want to be political at all. I just, part of what makes our story is who we are and what we believe and what we think and, and what we feel and experience. So I'm going to address that one day, but not today. Um, but today we're going to do a few Q&A questions. Question from Christopher Keen. He said, curious to know what you think of the boat now after a long passage compared to the monohull. Well, that's easy. I would never go back to a monohull ever. Never, never, ever, ever, ever. Never getting back together again, as Taylor Swift would say. I love the catamaran. It has some faults. There's no doubt it's not the perfect end all boat, but it is a whole lot better for my family and the way we travel than a monohull. Monohulls have their advantages. Monohulls are. Uh, you know they definitely have some advantages but uh, for us the catamaran has more advantages for and when we weigh it out than anything else it was a good ride it was a nice ride and, and we really like it and i don't know if it's because this is almost a 60 foot catamaran and it just handles waves because we've seen a lot of smaller catamarans the 40 foot the 45 foot even 50 footers that just they bounce quite a bit and and uh but still the rides on those are still smoother than it, it's not smoother but it's 
better than being healed over for days and days at a time and, and, and rolling and, and, and doing all that stuff. So, Christopher Keene, that's a long answer, but thanks for watching and thanks for the question. The next question is from Mr. Scott Havens, a YouTube question. How is the psychological aspect working out? Are you a closer family husband and wife? I would think that for sure, hands down, we are a closer family. Uh, the wife and me, we're on the edge, out of control, just fixing to go crazy. You know, she had me down in a headlock last night. I don't know. No, I think the reasons, you know, the reasons we started the journey are still there. We, we wanted to see, uh, we wanted to see a different life. We wanted to see things from a different perspective and see what, what was really out there in the world. We're still out there searching and that's what's fun is the searching, the looking. And, and we like that. We love the wildlife, we love the ocean life, and we like being where there's lots of wildlife under the water. So, Scott, thanks for watching. Appreciate your comment. All right, so last name, first name commented and asked the question, are we scared of sharks out there on the water? Uh, have you guys spotted any orcas, whales, or great whites? Uh, what's the coolest animal seen by you guys? Thanks in advance. By the way, I think you guys are living dream. Okay, so um, are there sharks out there in the water in the deep blue where we're out in the middle of the ocean, we all jump in the water? You know, I'm sure there are, and, there, and the sharks that are out there are supposedly pretty lethal. And if they ever mistakenly identified us as their prey, they might take a, they might take a leg. You know, I, I don't know. I, I always get nervous of that because that's the unknown. We don't know what's out there, but there's plenty more sharks around the islands and different things like that that don't bother us. And we've dove with lots of sharks, so yeah, it's a that is a question. I'm going to do some more research on that and, and figure out what is the risk of swimming out in the middle of the ocean, a thousand miles offshore, with the with the, the, the deep ocean sharks and stuff like that. As far as some of the neatest stuff we've seen, you know, the giant manta rays in the South Pacific, the uh, humpback whales, those were wonderful, wonderful things. Uh, we love that. We love lobster and we like eating lobster here in the Caribbean. There's plenty of lobsters, so that's always nice. Um, love dolphins. Dolphins get older after a while because you see so many of them that they're just everywhere. I'd like to swim with them. We have not yet got to swim with a pot of dolphins where they just sat around us and played with us. I'm looking forward to that experience, but I uh, uh, hadn't seen any orcas or great whites. Don't care to see a great white. I saw Jaws too many times growing up as a kid. want to stay away from J Jaws and, and, and his cousin because uh, I might not get back in the water if I ever saw a great white. I'd be paranoid and crazy. Also, we did see whales coming across the Atlantic, uh, different kinds of whales and, and uh, small whales. I don't know what they, I can't remember the names of them, but uh, no, they weren't pile whales. Uh, but we did see some whales. So uh, once again, thanks for asking and thanks for the comment. Greg Piercy, you asked a question. Uh, you said another channel was talking about waves slamming hard between the hulls. Do you, ha do you guys have that issue concern? On a catamaran, that is a very big deal. That is, that is probably the one downside to a catamaran is the, the waves slapping between the hulls. It goes down and it slaps on the side of the sugar scoops and the side of the hulls as you're, as you're passaging through the water, especially when you're on a beam reach. If you're going downwind, it's not very bad. If you're going down the waves, it's not bad. But when you're going across the waves or they're coming at a weird angle, it can slap pretty hard in there and it'll wake you up. And you get used to it. It's not nothing you can't get used to, but it is definitely different than a monohull slicing through the water. So you trade one for the other. But once again, Greg, thanks for watching. We appreciate the, the question. Hey guys, that brings us to a conclusion this week. And if you like what you're seeing, please subscribe, share with your friends, hit the like button, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and uh, Facebook. Once again, we love all you guys. We love everybody's following us, even the haters. We love you guys. Uh, we appreciate your comments. We even appreciate the haters' point of views. We, we like to hear all points of views. So we're not closed off to any of that. We look forward to seeing you guys out there. Stay safe.